WWE wrestling fans know him as Montel Vontavious Porter, MVP. He was U.S. champion in 2007 and 2009. Hassan Assad joins me now. Hassan, am I right that up until now you've never been permitted to vote? And will you exercise the franchise? I lost my right to vote because I was convicted of a felony at the age of 16 before I ever had a chance to, uh, to exercise it. And uh, I absolutely intend to uh, exercise my right to vote to participate in the democratic process. You say that voting disenfranchisement is just one area of, quote, discrimination against those who've paid their debt to society. Explain. Well, you have approximately 20 million unincarcerated convicted felons in the United States, give or take. And you, when you're released from prison, you want to uh, gain access to society. You want to work. You want to find a place to live. But if you're a convicted felon, we have a uh, segment of our society where you are legally discriminated against. Uh, job application. Have you been convicted of a felony? If you answer yes, you could be excluded, as I was, from gaining uh, employment because of a bad decision that you made. And our society says that when you go to prison, you pay your debt to society. However, once you're released from prison, uh, you never seem to ever pay that debt completely because society looks at you as a convicted felon. I know from your TED Talk, which, by the way, I highly recommend, that when you got out, you applied you. for employment at a call center. You thought you were going to get the gig, but it didn't come to pass. Right. Uh, it's, it's funny because I scored, uh, the administrator said that I scored higher than anyone she had ever seen. And she was talking to me about potentially a managerial position and a future with the company. And shortly thereafter, uh, a, a couple of men took me to a separate room and explained to me that in spite of my, my score on the aptitude test, that because I was a convicted felon, that that company wouldn't be hiring me. And uh, the woman went from praising me and adoring me to not speaking to me at all. And I was escorted off the property shortly thereafter because I, convict, uh, I was convicted of a felony. So there I was trying to reenter society to get gainful employment, to pay taxes, to do the things that someone who has paid their debt to society does. But I wasn't allowed to because of a crime I committed, because of a bad decision I made when I was a teenager. I think viewers will be interested, those who don't already know MVP's persona, will be interested to know that the person who took a, took a shot on you, who, who gave you that opportunity, was Vince McMahon. Yeah, I always say I have a huge level of respect for Vince McMahon because when society wouldn't give me an opportunity to earn a minimum wage, Vince McMahon took an opportunity, uh, took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity to become known to millions of people throughout the world and his... Uh, his wrestling empire, World Wrestling Entertainment. And during my time there, I used that platform to speak to juvenile delinquents, to speak to, uh, I, I was actually at one point the spokesperson for the National Guard Youth Foundation. And I used that platform to show people that convicted felons aren't always going to be bad. I did everything I could to show that uh, I was socially redeemed. I did everything I could, uh, volunteered my time as often as I could to show that you know, if you are a convicted felon and you work hard enough that you can't overcome that. But I just think that we need to have a conversation in our society that changes the way that we look at people who have been to prison. Um, it seems to be politicized right away when Bernie Sanders recently talked about people in prison having the right to vote. Immediately, that was equated to rapists and murderers. Well, Everybody who's in prison isn't a rapist or a murderer. You have people who committed crimes that are nonviolent. You have people who, uh, you know, if you've been at a cocktail party and you had one drink too many, that could change your life forever. You could become a convicted felon. So everyone isn't a violent offender. And I think that's, that's not fair that once you've been to prison and you've served your time, uh, you should be able to participate. It's my take that your right to vote should be an inalienable right. If you get sent to prison, you've lost your right to participate in society. So you lose your uh, ability to vote, but not your right. As soon as you're released and you're back in society, you should be able to continue voting. Um, part of the problem, what's wrong with Florida specifically, is that uh, by a two to one margin, Florida voters voted to restore the rights of felons. And as you uh, described, along party lines, uh, legislation was added so that if you don't pay your court costs, then you uh, effectively are still excluded from voting. What a lot of people don't know is that in the state of Florida, in 98, there was a constitutional amendment that uh, 
mandated that all Florida courts are funded by fines and fees. So in many cases, judges aren't even uh, uh, imposing these county clerks are. So you essentially are excluded from being able to participate in the process because you can't afford to. The amendment was very clear. Once you finish serving your time in prison, parole, or probation, your right to vote would be restored. But now, if uh, you're a low-level cocaine trafficker, you can be sentenced. You can have fines imposed on you to the tens, from the tens to the hundreds of thousands of dollars per count, which would mean that potentially you could never afford to vote again. And when you take into consideration in the state of Florida that uh, there are. Uh, debt collectors who are allowed to add up to 20% fees to these costs, uh, it's, it's exorbitant. And whereas the idea was to help convicted felons be able to participate in the democratic process, this legislation goes out of its way to exclude those people. Hassan, I really appreciate your perspective. The TED Talk is an eye-opener. I hope people will uh, Google it, watch it. I'll put it in my Twitter feed. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for having me on. I'm a big fan. Keep doing what you do. Thank you, sir.